Joseph Smith, first prophet, seer, and revelator of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was persecuted, tarred and feathered, beaten, put in jail, etc. He endured much, and now today we endure much. You've heard the jokes, the rumors, the myths, and more. Our question is why? Why are Mormons portrayed so differently from other religions? Why are we seen as so odd and unusual? Yes, being established in 1830, we are newer, but does that give any right to anyone to ridicule and persecute us more? Question after question, we get them all, and here are some of the answers we have. With multiple Christian denominations around the world, Mormonism is only just another. By definition, a Christian is one who professes belief in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Isn't that what Mormons are? The Church is a Christian faith centered on the Savior. And really, read the name, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Can it get any more clear? M. Russell Ballard, an apostle, said in 2007, The Holy Bible is a miracle. It is a miracle that the Bible literally contains within its pages the converting healing spirit of Christ, which has turned men's hearts for centuries, leading them to pray to choose right paths and to search to find their Savior. I bear solemn witness that we are true and full believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his revealed word through the Holy Bible. We not only believe the Bible, we strive to follow its precepts and to teach its message. The message of our missionaries is Christ and his gospel and his atonement, and the scriptures are the text of that message. While we have the Bible, we also have the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is another witness that Jesus Christ really lived, that he was and is God's son. It contains the writings of ancient prophets. One of these, Lehi, lived in Jerusalem around 600 BC. God commanded Lehi to lead a small group of people to the American continent. There they became a great civilization. God continued to call his prophets among these people. The Book of Mormon is the collection of the writings of their prophets and record keepers. It is named after Mormon, one of the last of these ancient prophets. These prophets knew about God's plan for his children and the mission of Jesus Christ. They recorded that Christ appeared after his resurrection to the people in America, taught them his gospel, and formed his church among them. The book contains the teachings of Jesus Christ, testifying of his atonement and his love. It supports and verifies the Bible. The Book of Mormon concludes with the great promise that those who read it and sincerely pray about it can know by the Holy Ghost that it is true. A lot of the time when people think of Mormons, they think of 19-year-old boys riding their bikes. When a Mormon boy is 19, or a girl is 21, they can be called to serve a mission to anywhere in the world. Why are missionaries so pushy? Do you know that feeling when you're just so happy you want to tell everyone and let them experience it with you? That's what it's like with missionary work. The church is what makes us happy. We want everyone to experience the same joy we have. In the Old Testament, it refers to the temple as a tabernacle, the house of the Lord. In 2 Samuel 25.8, it says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. We believe that in the temple we are closest to our Heavenly Father, and we perform sacred ordinances there like marriage. Because we believe it is the house of the Lord, you have to be worthy to enter it. In Psalms 24, 3-4, it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. The temple is also a place where we make covenants with God. What's up with Mormon underwear? As we said, in the temple, we make covenants with God. Wearing the temple garment is an outward expression of an inward commitment to follow the Savior. The temple garment is very similar to a turban in the Islamic religion to represent the covenants they have made, or the yarmulke for the Jewish. Biblical scripture contains many references to wearing of special garments. In the Old Testament, the Israelites are specifically instructed to turn their garments into a personal reminders of their covenants with God. Some other covenants you make in the temple is the covenant of marriage. Can a Mormon marry a non-Mormon? We believe that if you get married in the temple, you are not only married till death do us part, but for time and all eternity. But as we said earlier, to enter the temple, you have to be a worthy member of the church. So if you decide to marry a non-Mormon, then you would not be able to receive the blessings of being with your spouse for eternity. Why would you want to give up a blessing so wonderful? Also being sealed to your spouse for eternity makes it possible for you to be sealed for your family and children for forever. 
Why are Mormons so centered on family? A former prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Gordon B. Hinckley, said, We, the First Presidency, and the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, solemnly proclaim that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God, and that the family is central to the Creator's plan for the eternal destiny of His children. All human beings, male and female, are created in the image of God. Each is a beloved spirit son or daughter of heavenly parents, and as such each has a divine nature and destiny. Gender is an essential characteristic of individual premortal, mortal, and eternal identity and purpose. In the premortal realm, spirit sons and daughters knew and worshipped God as their eternal Father and accepted His plan by which His children could obtain a physical body and gain earthly experience to progress toward perfection and ultimately realize his or her divine destiny as an heir of eternal life. The divine plan of happiness enables family relationships to be perpetuated beyond the grave. Sacred ordinances and covenants available in holy temples make it possible for individuals to return to the presence of God and for families to be united eternally. The first commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve pertained to their potential for parenthood as husband and wife. We declare that God's commandment for his children to multiply and replenish the earth remains in force. We further declare that God has commanded that the sacred powers of procreation are to be employed only between man and woman lawfully wedded as husband and wife. We declare the means by which mortal life is created to be divinely appointed. We affirm the sanctity of life and of its importance in God's eternal plan. Husband and wife have a solemn responsibility to love and care for each other and for their children. Children are an heritage of the Lord. Parents have a sacred duty to rear their children in love and righteousness, to provide for their physical and spiritual needs, to teach them to love and serve one another, to observe the commandments of God and to be law-abiding citizens wherever they live. Husbands and wives, mothers and fathers will be held accountable before God for the discharge of these obligations. The family is ordained of God. Marriage between man and woman is essential to his eternal plan. Children are entitled to birth within the bonds of matrimony and to be reared by a father and a mother who honor marital vows with complete fidelity. Happiness in family life is most likely to be achieved when founded upon the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Successful marriages and families are established and maintained on principles of faith, prayer, repentance, forgiveness, respect, love, compassion, work, and wholesome recreational activities. By divine design, fathers are to preside over their families in love and righteousness and are responsible to provide the necessities of life and protection for their families. Mothers are primarily responsible for the nurture of their children. In these sacred responsibilities, fathers and mothers are obligated to help one another as equal partners. Disability, death, or other circumstances may necessitate individual adaptation. Extended families should lend support when needed. We warn that individuals who violate covenants of chastity, who abuse spouse or offspring, or who fail to fulfill family responsibilities will one day stand accountable before God. Further, we warn that the disintegration of the family 
will bring upon individuals, communities, and nations the calamities foretold by ancient and modern prophets. We call upon responsible citizens and officers of government everywhere to promote those measures designed to maintain and strengthen the family as the fundamental unit of society. Polygamy, the marriage of more than one woman to the same man, was an important part of the teachings of the Church for half a century. The practice began during the lifetime of Joseph Smith, but became publicly and widely known during the time of Brigham Young. Today, the practice of polygamy is strictly prohibited in the Church, as it has been for over 120 years. The Mormon Church is widely known for its strict rules, and at times there seems like there is no point, but they all have specific reasons. The Word of Wisdom. Mormons can't drink coffee, tea, or any alcohol. Why? In 1833, Prophet Joseph Smith was given a revelation that all saints who remember to keep and do these shall receive help and shall find wisdom. Another rule is that Mormon teens are advised not to date until they are 16. The leaders of the church have said developing serious relationships too early in life can limit the number of people you can meet and can perhaps lead to immorality. Or you may have noticed that the girls' outfits are less revealing, for example, their prom dresses. They believe that their bodies are sacred, and they show that they know how precious their bodies are through their appearance. Mormons really aren't that different. We believe things very similar to most of you. We go to school. And we hang out with our friends. And most of all, we try to be a good example. I'm Brianna. I'm Kylie. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm Maddie. Hi, I'm Jade. I'm Kaylee. I'm Sean. I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm you. And we're Mormons.